Governor Kristi Noem defended her coronavirus strategy this morning, calling it a, quote, balanced approach that allows the state economy to continue to progress during the pandemic. Music lovers and enthusiasts will have to wait a little while longer to observe and appreciate the new additions to Vermilion's National Music Museum. Hi Kelly, yes, the USD volleyball team is paving a way for a near perfect season with a 24 and one overall season record and a 21 winning game streak. Here to join me today to take me a little bit behind the scenes of what it's like to prepare for a season like this is head coach Leanne Williamson. The team returned to the field on Sunday against South Dakota State. The Oats were looking to snap the Jackrabbits 12 game sh shutout streak. SDSU got on the board first as Maya Hansen splits two USD defenders and shoots the ball over the Coyotes goalkeeper. The Jacks maintain the 1-0 lead through the first half. Into the second now, and Madison Sullivan is being chased by three Jackrabbits, but it doesn't matter. She gets loose and fires a sneaky shot on the goal. The ball spins into the net, and the Yotes tie the game. The fan in attendance nearly saw another goal, but Shaylee Gale's shot doesn't get through. Time is winding down now, and SDSU has a chance, but the potential go-ahead goal sails over the crossbar. A Vermilion woman's been charged with murder following the death of her one-year-old child. Maria Milda was arrested after officers discovered the child when responding to a call Monday afternoon. The cause of the death is still unknown. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers will play against the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the Canadian Football League's 107th Grey Cup on Sunday. But Winnipeg might not have made it that far without former USD quarterback Chris Strebler. Strebler filled in for the injured starting quarterback during the season. He threw for 1,500 passing yards and ran for 800 this season. Kyle News is partnering with the Volant to host an election night watch party. The event takes place Tuesday evening beginning at 7 in the Al Newharth Media Center. The public's welcome to watch as the polls close. Those attending may be asked for their opinions about the results and their quotes may be used in next week's Coyote News or the Volant. The men's side of conference play was a little less predictable. Aside from North Dakota State finishing first and Omaha at fourth, no team finished the season where they were slated in the preseason poll. North Dakota State and South Dakota State shadowed each other all season long, each grabbing a share of the Summit League regular season title. Last summer, potential students could only visit USD's campus through screen with a virtual tour. When the fall semester began, admissions got a chance to restart their visiting program. Coyote Visit Days is a way for incoming freshmen and their parents to get information about USD. And welcome back. After sweeping the Rainbow Classic, USD looked to bring that same performance to their home court. The undefeated Yokes hosted the 0-2 Texas Southern Tigers on Friday in the Sanford Coyote Sports Center. Early in the game, Tristan Simpson finds a wide open Tyler Hagedorn for a three-pointer. Hags had 33 points in the game. Later on, the Tigers answered the Coyotes with their own three-pointer, thanks to a nice bounce from the backboard. But USC continued to attack the Texas Southern defense. Cody Kelly takes a pass from Hunter Goodrick and buries a three-pointer. He gets some sideline praise, but the Tigers respond with some smooth ball movement to weave through the Yotes defenders for a big dunk. But the Coyotes didn't go away. Cody Kelly gives the ball to Hagedorn, and he drains another three. Hags finished the game shooting 8-4-8 beyond the arc as the Coyotes defeated Texas Southern 88-69. A lot of us may have slept with the lights on after watching a scary movie, but the memory of some of the characters may still haunt us to this day. In this week's Out and About, we asked students about the movie that scares them the most. Here's what they had to say. USD's single stream recycling program has fed more than 95,000 pounds of material since its installment in December 2018. And one USD graduate student is coordinating an expansion to allow even more access to recycling for students. Anna Moore, the campus recycling coordinator, says recycling is just one part of encouraging sustainability on campus. I think that we have an opportunity as a university to set an example, to show that show what's possible and that we can really get away from this model that we have of just buying a lot of stuff, using it quickly, and then throwing it all in the ground. The yellow and green single screen recycling bins are currently in 20 buildings on campus with plans for expansion in the coming semesters. When putting items in the single stream recycling bins, it's important not to include any food or leftover liquids or it will contaminate the entire load. 
That would be no easy task, and the Yotes were tested quick and early. Only a few minutes into the game, transfer Jalen Hurts will drop back near the goal line and fire a laser at C.D. Lamb for the touchdown. Sooners up quick on the board, 7-zip. The defense had their work cut out for them, but still the Sooners were knocking at the door again. This time, Hurts shows play action and another quick pass. This time to Jeremiah Hall for the 8-yard reception. It's the Sooners up 14-0 after one quarter of action. Quickly though, Oklahoma's back at it. Hurts back in shotgun. Hands it off to Kennedy Brooks and there's no one there to stop him. 13 yards for the touchdown. It's 21-0 Oklahoma and there's nothing to stop them. The game wraps up the first two days of the tournament, tipping off at 8.30 Sunday evening. And for the last time, we welcome Bailey Zubke to discuss this interesting matchup. Bailey, starting off with South Dakota State, Doug Wilson, with his injuries, how are they going to do this? Do you think that they're going to play him at all? Or are they going to play him for a full minute? Uh, it'll be interesting to see for sure. The coronavirus pandemic continuing to surge on nationwide. Plans for USD's spring semester schedule remain up in the air. The South Dakota's Board of Regents has yet to confirm whether or not its universities will go back to a regular 16-week schedule in 2021. USD's provost, Kurt Hackamer, says remote learning is still a possibility. Hackamer is one of several members on a school's official COVID-19 task force, whose core was selected by President Sheila Gestring. Vermillion's average annual snowfall is 35 inches. Yesterday's snowfall kicked off seasonal odd, even parking, which determines when and where Vermillion drivers can park. Coyote News' Jackson Thorson got a chance to learn more about who it affects. Former Coyote Matt Mooney has signed his first NBA deal, inking a local with the Memphis Grizzlies. The deal is one year worth the minimum salary that guarantees Mooney will receive a camp invite from Memphis. This means that shots fired by Officer Brett Hackinson put the lives of others in danger, which, according to the grand jury, included Taylor's neighbors. Protesters have started all over Louis Louisville following this afternoon's decision as people demand more justice for the incident. Since the shooting, Hackinson has since been dismissed from the force, and the other two officers have been placed on administration leave. Students living on campus this semester are embarking on an unprecedented challenge for USD housing. Attending class during a worldwide pandemic while trying to avoid major outbreaks in university dorms. As coronavirus cases and death rates in South Dakota skyrocket to an all-time state high and become the worst in the country per capita, Students living in residence halls have become concerned about the future and whether or not they will be returning to live in the dorms for much longer. When our COVID numbers were up, it was kind of a lot of people were more scared of us getting kicked out, you know, and then having to go online the whole semester. Director of Housing Kate Fitzgerald noted that students at USD sign a full academic year housing contract, but are billed one semester at a time. Therefore, if a student does not want to return to campus in the spring semester, Fitzgerald says to apply for a contract release. If approved, this would cancel their housing for the spring and no charge would be added to their SDE pay account. Fitzgerald added that unless something with COVID-19 changes, their operations will remain much the same for the spring. Details on how to apply for a contract release and other information can be found at the University Housing tab on USD.edu.